before we get this underway, I want to extend a most sincere thank you to everyone who contributed to this project. When I first decided to put the call out, I never imagined this many people would respond, and it makes me so happy to see that even 20 years later, my favorite game series has a loyal and diehard fanbase that is still very active. I also want to give a big shout out to Memer Deluxe 1111, alternatively called Meme Man, for creating the previous Battle Network Iceberg that I covered on this channel. Without that video, I highly doubt this project would be anywhere near as successful as it was. I also want to thank Kaisan, who agreed to share his notes with me, as he's been working on his own iceberg chart that encompasses the majority of the Mega Man franchise and not just Battle Network. I'll have a link to his channel in the description, and I would greatly appreciate it if you would show him some love and support as well. His contributions and conversations with me over Discord have helped me shave countless hours off this project, so it's safe to say that he helped with at least half of this chart. And so, without further ado, I present to you our brand new community collaborated Rockman EXE Iceberg Chart. There are over 200 entries on this list, with the entries ranging from well-known trivia to obscure oddities in the games to WTF moments from the anime and even some game-breaking mechanics. We also have some interesting theories and discussion points, some of which I haven't seen on any major forums or wikis. You may be curious about the color coding. Well, it's simple. While the version of this chart that I posted on Reddit for you to follow along with, link in description, has only white text, the one that I'm using for this video has color-coded text that relates to the entries from Memer Deluxe's iceberg. Entries that are written in gold are the ones that I think I covered well enough and don't need to repeat. Green entries are ones that I covered last time, but I have more to say on them now that we're talking about the anime and manga more in depth. And orange entries are ones that were created by topics that I thought were a bit too vague and needed to be split apart, like the entries spin-offs, toys, and manga. Before embarking on this journey, I'd recommend checking out the previous iceberg video I did so that this information won't need repeating. Link on screen and in the description. And of course, be advised that both that video and this one are absolutely loaded with spoilers for all things Rockman EXE. This is going to be a very long one, so grab some snacks and a drink and get settled in as we begin our deep dive into some more trivia, lore, and conspiracies surrounding Mega Man Battle Network. Base.exe I don't think that it's any exaggeration to say that the entire conflict of the second and third game centers around Base.exe. This isn't revealed until the end of Battle Network 3, however. So, Base's backstory is that he was created by Dr. Cossack to be the world's first independent net navvy, fully capable of using all of his abilities without relying on a human operator, and was nicknamed the Auto Navi. During the early days of the cyber world, there was an incident that caused every device connected to a program known as Alpha to go haywire and eventually be destroyed. Base was framed for the incident and was ordered to be executed by Scilab's elite navi corps. Although Base survived, he was badly injured with a slash mark across his chest that destroyed his navi emblem. He wandered the internet, battling and deleting all who approached him and taking their powers for his own with his unique Get Ability program. Even though Base didn't make a proper narrative appearance until Battle Network 3, he appears in Battle Network 1 as a secret boss and is mentioned in Battle Network 2 as a clone of him serves as the penultimate boss of the game. The real Base shows up as the super boss of the post game, but these events probably aren't actually canon. The reason the base is the crux of the story for Battle Network 2 is that Gospel's entire goal was to be able to create infinite clones of base. This was all orchestrated by Dr. Wily as a means to delete the Guardian program to unleash Alpha, trying to destroy the cyber world. But, since the Gospel project failed, Wily managed to manipulate the real base into siding with him and aiding his powers to World 3. At the end of the game, Dr. Cossack uses a pulse transmission machine to send his mind into the cyber world, where he and base have a confrontation, which leads to the Doctor being badly injured. After destroying the Guardian program, Base is defeated by Mega Man before being absorbed by Alpha. In the first three games, Base's trademark abilities include a wide variety of buster shots, a defensive shield called Life Aura, and his most devastating technique, the Earthbreaker. In Battle Network 3's post-game, Mega Man feeds 300 bug frags into the bug frag trader in Secret Area, and upon revisiting the area, he finds that Base has returned, but he no longer remembers his own name, only hungering for battle. Entering the fight will show that Base has gained the powers of the Gospel Virus Beast, being able to use its head as a cannon, as well as attacking with its claws. After the battle, Mega Man tries to get Base to remember his identity and how he used to have a bond with Dr. Cossack. Base refuses to listen and charges up another Earthbreaker, but he disappears in a flash of light. Though Base GS only appeared in Battle Network 3 and Battle Chip Challenge, this form has become one of Base's most iconic incarnations outside the main games. In Battle Network 4 through 6, Base only appears in side missions and the post game, no longer having an impact on the main story. In these subsequent fights, Base now has a new set of abilities, losing his Aura Shield and gaining new attacks, such as the Dark Rings called Hell's Rolling and Dark Swords called Dark Arm Blades. His Earthbreaker makes a spiritual return in Battle Network 5 as his strongest attack, Chaos Nightmare, where he throws a giant ball of dark energy. But this energy ball is just the same sprite used for his two-column hitting Darkness Overload, but is thrown from high in the air instead of being fired from his hands. 
His defensive barrier is referenced in the secret battles in the 4th and 5th games against Space Double X, but these can only be accessed with an E-Reader card, Base Cross, or Soul Cross, and rather than functioning more like an Aura Shield, which requires all the damage be done in one strike, it functions more like a barrier battle chip, which takes a set amount of damage before it drops. In Battle Network 6, Base's boss fight got another overhaul. He permanently loses his shield, as well as his Dark Arm Blades, Darkness Overload, and Chaos Nightmare, but now his Buster does not cause post-hit invincibility, and he can use a wide assortment of battle chips, including Dark Sword. This is a nice callback to a line that Shod said in Battle Network 2, stating that Base theoretically can copy any battle chip data to use whenever he wants. This time, Base's most powerful form is Base BX, where he has absorbed fragments of the opposite side Beast that Mega Man obtained. If you're playing Gregar version, Base can use Falzar's Tornado, and in Falzar version, he uses Gregar's Flame Breath, which is another throwback to Base GS. Defeating Base BX in the Underground seems to permanently delete him, as he actually explodes during a cutscene. But if you do the Graveyard Boss Rush again, you can fight against Base SP as many times as you want. In the Mega Man NT Warrior manga, Base's backstory prior to the main events of the series are nearly identical to the game version. After his introduction, he's a recurring character throughout the rest of the series, first appearing before Mega Man and Proto Man in the Undernet. The duo challenges Base, but they find themselves easily outmatched. This inspires Lan and Mega Man to train to become stronger, so that they can defeat Base when they meet him again. Base appears again when Lan's class is on a cruise ship. Mega Man, now having acquired Hub Style, can actually hold his own against Base, even managing to deal some pretty heavy damage. That is, until Base uses his Get Ability program to copy Hub Style's power. Base then proceeds to thrash Mega Man and has a moment of self reflection. Seeing Mega Man in such a hopeless state, given that Lan was unconscious at the time, Base remembers how it felt to have his human caretaker seemingly abandon him. However, Lan rejoins the fight, and Mega Man attempts to reassume his Hub Style form, but only has enough power for a small, super condensed energy beam that manages to pierce Base's Earthbreaker and then Base himself, as his defense aura drops whenever he uses this attack. Going for the overkill, got Base killed. Later, when the Dark Power Navis were invading the real world due to a dark energy field, Base is resurrected as Base GS, and the ensuing battle leads to Mega Man and Proto Man performing the first Double Soul. During the fight, Base seems to lose his drive and determination, no longer wishing to destroy all of humanity, now that he's been soundly defeated by the same Navi twice. Mega Man and Base share a moment of mutual respect, but it's broken up by the appearance of the two Dark Lloyds, Laser Man and Dark Mega Man. The next volume sees Dark Mega Man trying to absorb Base and use his power to open up a gateway to the World of Darkness. Eventually, Base breaks free from his confinement and makes a proper return during the battle against Nebula Grey, where he and Mega Man merge together to form Base Cross, effortlessly defeating the Dark God of Destruction. Base appears again at the end of the manga, absorbing Psybeast Falzar and teaming up with Mega Man to defeat the merged Super Psybeast. Base would also show up in other works, including the Nightmare of Battleship Stadium, as well as The Pair's Journey, which shows Base and Mega Man's Odyssey that takes place after the battle with the Psybeasts. The anime would give us a much different iteration of Base. His backstory is now different, most likely because the Rockman EXE anime was airing before the third game was released, and that is where Base's narrative backstory was first explored. He appears during the Grave arc, and, after failing to absorb the Grave Virus Beast, seemingly explodes. However, it turns out that he takes control of a robot body and uses it to travel around the real world. Base returns in Access, but he plays a much smaller role, though he does revive Shade Man, who then goes on to battle against Dr. Regal and Cross Fusion Laser Man. In the stream arc, Base takes a big role early on, trying to absorb Mega Man and Proto Man's ultimate programs to become stronger in order to combat the looming threat of Duo. However, Base is easily defeated by Slur, Duo's herald, and then cast into the Undernet. He returns in the Rockman EXE movie and helps Mega Man defeat Nebula Grey, again, as Base Cross. During the final episodes of Stream, Base reappears and does battle with Slur again, but this time with more power as he absorbed what was left of Nebula Grey. Base emerges as the victor, deleting the extraterrestrial Navi. He promises that if Earth survives Duo, he and Mega Man will meet again. But that was a lie, because there were still two more seasons of the anime and Base never reappeared, for whatever reason. There is a bit more to Base's backstory in the anime, but I'll have to wait for another point later in the iceberg to fully elaborate on it. ACDC Town the starting point of every main game in the series, except for Battle Network 6. ACDC Town's recurring locations include Lance House, as well as the houses of Lance friends, Mail, Yai, and Dex. We also frequently visit Higsby's Battleship Shop and ACDC School. Starting with Battle Network 4, the entire town got rearranged, and it looks pretty weird. The entire town layout has changed, including the school gate being completely removed and replaced by Yai's mansion. Higsby's shop and ACDC Park are now on the opposite side of town, and the Metroline entrance has moved as well. The name of ACDC Town was taken from the name of Alternating Current and Direct Current Electricity. Although, with the Mega Man franchise's penchant for making musical references, we could say that it's a reference to the band ACDC. Some of the more interesting and strange trivia include the fact that there's a secret hidden Metroline underneath a statue in front of ACDC School, and that Metroline leads straight to World 3's headquarters. There's another strange secret, but we'll talk about that one later. 
It is also worth noting that for some reason, in the game files of Mega Man Star Force 1, you can find a fully rendered 3D model of ACDC Town. This is odd because the overworld of Star Force is still 2D, very much like the Battle Network series. I wonder what this could mean. Mega Man is Land's brother. I actually need to correct something that I said in the previous video. I said that Hub was stillborn. That's actually incorrect. Hub died when he and Lan were roughly a year old or so, from a condition called HBD, and this ailment is also affecting a side character from Battle Network 3 named Mamoru. This disease showing up in Lan's life again gave him and Mega Man the motivation to befriend and later protect Mamoru while he underwent surgery to cure this disease. In regards to the anime and manga, Hub is never mentioned. Not as Lan's brother, at least. Hub style does exist in the manga, but Hub isn't specified to be a person or program tied to Mega Man and Lan's DNA, and this power is even able to be copied by base. It may be hinted at that Hub still exists as Mega Man, though, because Mega Man was given to Lan at a young age to watch over him as a sort of big brother, and after the battle with Nebula, Lan's parents were actually showing more concern for Mega Man's well-being than Lan's. In addition to that, Hub Style's Perfect Synchro is similar to the effects of Hub.Bat, which Dr. Ikari states that any damage Mega Man receives will be inflicted on LAN as well. Though we see that every Navi and Operator pair that uses Full Synchro suffers this to a certain degree, it's amplified by Hub Style's greater synchronization rate. So maybe he is Hub, but they never explicitly spell it out for us. As far as I'm aware, at least. The manga does have one short bonus chapter called Saito and Neto that was released alongside the 2016 reprint of the manga, but I can't find any info on this one beyond the title. Maybe they do confirm Hub's presence in the manga, since Hub's Japanese name was Saito. Hub isn't mentioned in the anime at all, style change or otherwise. We do see that Mega Man was created by Dr. Ikari, and his data was given to Lan on a disc that is used to overwrite Lan's generic navi, so maybe we can say that Hub was inside the disc? This could also be why Mega Man's data stayed behind inside the PETs of Land's friends after Ferriman deleted him. The ghost of Hub wasn't willing to pass on so easily, and they just needed to put his soul into a new body. Compression Codes Ever get tired of your Navi customizer programs taking up too much space? Entering certain button combinations while some of the programs are selected will cause one block to be removed from the program, freeing up more space in the Navi customizer grid. You can find these codes at various parts in the games, and some of them are shown in the anime as well. Dark Chips as stated previously, dark chips are battle chips infused with dark energy. They grant vast amounts of power, but taint the user's soul with evil. Dark chips themselves didn't appear in the manga, and they had a bit of a different function in the anime. In Access, dark chips were simply battle chips that stored large amounts of dark energy, and using them infused a navi with a dark aura, granting increased power levels, but they did not act as an individual weapon, like the dark chips in-game. Although this sort of function is seen in Battle Network 5, as dark chips are an overworld obstacle that create clouds of dark energy that can only be traversed by Gyro Man or Shadow Man, it is worth noting that in the anime, Dark Mega Man can still call upon dark invariants of different battle chips, like Dark Sword and Dark Wide Shot. In both the game and the anime, the rush that a Navi gets from a dark chip becomes addictive, and the Navi in question starts to develop a dependence for it, needing another dark chip to get the same buzz. In regards to the dark chips from Battle Network 3, I was actually incorrect on one point last time. While Base and Base Plus are dark chips and need either a dark hole or the dark license Navi customizer program, Base GS is not a dark chip and can be used freely. I apologize for this mistake. For those interested in Rockman EXE 4.5, the coding for Dark Chips apparently does still exist inside the game somewhere, since 4.5 was built on top of Battle Network 4's engine, but they aren't accessible. In addition to that, apparently the Dark Chip Select screen can still be accessed if one is playing the real Battle Network style patch for EXE 4.5. But I already made a full video covering this topic. On another note, if you want to use Dark Chips in Battle Network 4 without any sort of repercussion, there is an exploit you can do using Junk Soul, where you allow Dark Chips to appear and select them, but don't use them. Next turn, get Mega Man out of his worried emotional state, then activate Junk Soul, and the dark chips you selected will show up as the Junk Chips and can be used without any negative side effects, even after Junk Soul wears off and in either a normal or worried emotional state. This is weird to me. I wonder what the trigger for causing the evil state is if it's not just the act of using dark chips itself. Cross Fusion a mechanic exclusive to the anime, certain humans and navvies can merge together by using a synchro chip while inside a dimensional area in a process called cross fusion, which is kind of like if the operators could wear their navvies like a Power Ranger suit. In cross fusion, battle chips must be inserted into the PET prior to activating the fusion, and if one wants to change battle chips, the fusion will need to be broken and then reactivated. Needless to say, cross fusion puts an enormous strain on the operator's body. Not every human can perform cross fusion as it requires a strong synergy between navvy and operator. 
Known CrossFusion members include Land with Mega Man, Shod with Proto Man, Mail with Roll, the other team navvies from Battle Network 5, except that Miss Yuri and Needle Man replace Ribita and Toad Man, Dr. Regal with Laser Man, Blackbeard with Dive Man, Yuko with Circus Man, and Goro Misaki with Prism Man. The last pair of characters mentioned are exclusive to the anime. Mr. Famous in addition to serving as a bonus boss and chip peddler, Mr. Famous also runs a net battle school, even though we don't really get to attend. During Battle Network 3 Blue version, he'll give you some pointers in between battles with him. Mr. Famous is also featured on a poster in Land's room in white version of the game. It's also said that in Battle Network 4, Mr. Famous assisted Land's father, Dr. Ikari, in designing the new model PET. Mr. Famous's navvies include Gate Man in Battle Network 2, Punk in Battle Network 3, Kendo Man in Battle Network 4, and Grid Man in Battle Network 5. In the anime, Mr. Famous doesn't seem to have a regular Navi, and though he isn't seen net battling, he often provides support to our heroes in various other ways, including supplying them with extra codes and offering field support with dimensional areas during the access and stream arcs. In the Japanese version, his name is Meijin, and Lan always calls him Meijin-san, to which he replies, no need for formalities. This is apparently a reference to the man that he was designed after, Masakazu Eguchi. In the manga, Mr. Famous rallies together the strongest net battlers he can find in preparation for the invasion of the Dark Navis. He likely knew about the impending doom because he is close friends with Serenade, Lord of the Undernet. In this version, Mr. Famous's navi is Punk. Sadly, he and his navi are almost killed by being half-eaten by Desert Man. This leaves the two of them comatose, and we don't see them again after the incident is over. Another fun fact is that Mr. Famous' shirt changes depending on the game, and the number on the shirt reflects the anniversary of the Mega Man series, wearing a 15 in Battle Network 3 and 18 in Battle Network 6. This design also changes at different points in the anime. Mr. Famous was also a spokesperson in the commercials for Rockman EXE 5. Double Hero I dare say that Double Hero is the second most iconic program advance in the series, right behind Life Sword. This features Mega Man and Proto Man teaming up for a combo attack, hitting the entire enemy area. In the first game, the combination for Double Hero is Fighter Sword, Knight Sword, Hero Sword, and any of the Proto Man chips, all with the chip code of B. It does 400 damage. In the Battle Network 1 remake, Operation Shooting Star, this program advance returns, as well as having two other variants, those being Double Hero 2, which is the same combo of chips, except replace Proto Man with Burai, or Rogue, as he's known in English, and Double Rockman, which uses Barrier, Fighter Sword, Busker Sword, and Shooting Star Rockman. In Battle Network 2, the attack power was reduced to 70 damage per hit and hits 8 times, this time using Custom Sword, Variable Sword, and Proto Man. The same combo is used in Network Transmission and a less powerful version of the advance in Battle Network 3 called Deux Hero. Adding Slasher to the front of this chain creates the true Double Hero, which hits 10 times instead of 8. The program advance would not return until Battle Network 6, using Wide Blade, Long Blade, and Proto Man. Although the program advance was absent from Battle Networks 4 and 5, the DS version of BN5 featured the combo attack using the party battle system. If you have full synchro active as either Mega Man or Proto Man, and then switch to the other, the two of them will use this iconic tag team move. The Mega Man NT Warrior manga uses this team up twice. Once during the battle with Base, used to break his aura, and again later to wipe out all of Graves' navvies in one fell swoop. Rockman EXE 4.5 pays homage to this double hero versus base battle during the end credits, as the sprite animation shows Mega Man and Proto Man combining their powers to break through base's barrier. Note that this isn't base double X, yet he uses base double X's black barrier. As far as I'm aware, this combo is never called by name in the anime, but we see Mega Man and Proto Man teaming up countless times, so it's implied. Secret Area this is the primary post-game of Battle Network 3, where the top-ranked Undernet navvies dwell. The entrance is in Undersquare, only accessible from the Undernet server in the Ura Inn bathhouse. When interacting with a hole in the center of the area, Mega Man dematerializes and descends into the secret area. This location can only be exited through the same portal, because the area is locked and jacking out is impossible. This location has a very holy vibe to it, with marble textures being surrounded by water, and it feels like a sanctuary, despite the dark navvies that dwell here. Our opponents are Dark Man, Yamato Man, whose name was stupidly localized as Japan Man, Serenade, and Base GS. Upon claiming the title of number one from Serenade, you gain the right to challenge the Serenade time trials. The trek through here is fraught with danger, as you must use the hammer key item to crush monoliths that contain powerful viruses, as well as circumvent the numbers security system, which requires you to destroy these towers in numerical sequence. The area is also home to bountiful treasure and some of the strongest viruses in the game. The Secret Area and its master, Serenade, apparently also make an appearance in the mobile game Phantom of the Network, but with a bit of different presentation. Copybots. We covered these last time as well. Copybots, or copyroids, can house a net navi and transform itself into said navi, allowing them to interact with the real world, but they usually have restrictions on them that prevent the use of battle chips or other weapons, and only have physical strength comparable to an adult man. 
World 3 created giant copybots and used them to bring the Psybeasts into the real world in order to unleash their wrath upon the Earth. In the Beast arc of the anime, copybots were created by Makoto Aoki, who is apparently an ex-girlfriend to Mr. Famous. The pair team up to perfect the project, and these copyroids serve basically the same purpose as the ones from the games. Ironically enough, the first enemy Navi to hijack one of these copyroids is Punk, though in the anime, Punk does not belong to Mr. Famous. Copybots did not appear in any of the manga associated with the Rockman EXE IP. Gospel the primary antagonists of the second game. Their members include Arashi Kazafuki and Airman, Speedy Dave and Quickman, Mercenaries Dark Miyabi and Shadowman, Princess Pride and Nightman, Magnus Gauss and Magnetman, and the solo navvies Cutman and Freezeman. Gospel's leader is a little further down the iceberg, so I'll talk about him later. The Net Mafia's crimes include attempting to murder Lan's friend Yai by exposing her to high amounts of toxic gas, trying to blow up the dam at the Akudan Valley campgrounds, literally deleting an entire nation's worth of net navvies and their king, hijacking the mother computer, which puts the entirety of Electopia's cyber world at risk, crashing an official net battler's meeting and putting the members through medieval dungeon traps, hijacking a plane and trying to crash it, and covering the net in ice, thus messing with the world's global environment. The final boss of Battle Network 2 is a multi-bug organism that carries the namesake of the criminal organization. It also bears the ability to transform its head into a copy of Airman, Quickman, or Cutman, and its trademark attack is a wide area of effect elemental breath weapon that switches to the target's elemental weakness. Gospel was also the second primary antagonistic force of both the anime and the manga, though in the localized versions they were referred to as Grave, for censorship reasons. In the anime, Grave served a similar role to the one they had in-game, with similar crimes, like attempting to destroy a dam and freezing a city. The Grave virus beast had a much different set of abilities, including traveling as a shapeless mass of slime, as well as engulfing and absorbing its victims. It nearly destroyed the entire cyber world, or at the very least, Net City, but Bugstyle Mega Man was able to basically outbug the bug and rebuild the cyber world while also destroying the virus beast. In the manga, Grave plays a much shorter role, only being around for roughly a volume and a half, Airman was destroyed by Hubstyle Mega Man after interrupting a friendly net battle between Lan and Shod. Though this action did cause Lan's PET to be destroyed, as Lan and Mega Man activated Perfect Synchro, which resulted in Mega Man going on a rampage while Lan was left catatonic until Mega Man expended all of his energy. After that, Grave hijacks a cruise ship that was hosting Lan's entire school class, and they attack the pair in an attempt to capture the Hubstyle's data. Mega Man and Proto Man team up to delete all the remaining Grave navvies at once but their remains culminate to form the Virus Beast, which was defeated by Hubstyle Mega Man, and then revived, and then shortly afterward, destroyed by base. And the unconscious operatives were taken into custody after the authorities arrived on the scene. Mr. Prog and Navi in Vending Machine This is just a little bit of humor in Battle Network 3. If you jack into the vending machine in the hospital's lobby, you find a Mr. Prog counting money, but he says he's missing 100 zenny. Right next to him is a purple Navi that's standing on top of said 100 zenny. This is just a fun little bit of personality in this game. The series is loaded with these moments, like the overarching haggle between two navvies in the Elect Town homepage in Battle Network 4. Dark Messiah Dark Messiah is the team-up of Gospel and Base. It first appeared in Battle Network 2 as the Dark Messiah Program Advance, or Darkness, as it was localized. This attack was basically a guaranteed victory since it does 3000 damage a hit and hits twice, once with Gospel's Breath and once with Base's Earthbreaker. This program advance was accomplished by using Base V3, Anti-Navi, and any given Gospel chip, which were event exclusives. In Battle Network 4, combining Dark Line, Bug Chain, and either Base or Base Anomaly will grant the Dark Neo, or Dark Messiah Neo, PA, in which Dark Mega Man uses an attack very similar to the Bug Charge Giga chip while Base attacks with Darkness Overload. In Battle Network 4, Mega Man must be in Dark Soul mode to use this advance, while it's fully accessible in EXE 4.5. In Battle Network 6, the Darkness PA returns again, this time with the combination being two Voodoo Dolls and Base or Base Anomaly. Dark Mega Man uses Gospel's Breath and Base attacks with Dark Sword. Other retro program advances and battle chips were similarly recreated in Battle Network 6, some cooler than the older ones and some with less flair. This combo attack is used in the NT Warrior manga and retains its original name, even in localization. The obvious reason for the name change is that Messiah is often associated with Jesus Christ, and calling someone a Dark Messiah would definitely raise some red flags. The Dark Messiah combo would serve as the inspiration for Base GS in Battle Network 3, as the Gospel organization tried to create a copy of Base via Bug Fusion, but of course this also is a throwback to classic Mega Man's Base and Trouble and their Super Mode Fusion. 3D EXE model in Star Force 1 Within the code of Mega Man Star Force 1, there are some unused 3D models from the Battle Network series, one for Mega Man.exe, one for LAN, and one for a normal Navi, as well as the aforementioned 3D render of ACDC Town. While Mega Man does appear in Star Force 1, it's only as a 2D sprite, not a 3D model, and LAN and the normal Navi don't appear at all, let alone ACDC Town. The mystery deepens. Solo Navi Operators Solo navvies are a recurring element in the Battle Network series. As the name implies, they are navvies that don't have a visible operator. 
It's been stated in the lore that navvies always fight better if a human is operating them, unless they're based on EXE. There are some cases where a navvy doesn't have an operator that appears on screen, but there is a possibility that they do have operators, we just never see them. Freeze Man was apparently a solo navvy in Battle Network 2 and in the manga, but in Battleship Challenge, he is shown to be operated by Gospel's former leader. In the anime, Stone Man and Blaster Man were both solo navvies who worked for World 3, and they entered the N1 Grand Prix with decoy operators who were actually robotic drones underneath their disguises. So, the jury's out. Some navvies apparently can be solo, but it's not known how they can use battle chips when it's been shown time and again that navvies need an operator to give them the battle chips. Again, unless they are base. Dark Mega Man in the anime could also summon battle chips at will. Child Kidnappings it has come to my attention that one recurring element of villainy in this series is child kidnapping. Several times, we see children being abducted or held against their will. In the first game, you have to rescue Dr. Freud's kidnapped son, who is being used as leverage to force Dr. Freud to sabotage the waterworks. In Operation Shooting Star, the remake of Battle Network 1, Miss Mad and Count Zap plan to kidnap Male, but they are stopped by the appearance of Star Force Mega Man. In Battle Network 2, though Lan didn't get kidnapped, when he took a ride from a stranger while in Netopia, the driver refused to let Lan out of his car until he managed to steal all the battle chips in Lan's pack. In Battle Network 3, during the zoo scenario, Dex's little brother Chisao is held hostage by animals being controlled by the World 3 operative Inukai, who is Beastman's operator. In Battle Network 4 Red Sun, Chisao fakes himself getting kidnapped as a means of stalling Lan so that he'll have to forfeit the Den tournament, but he eventually turns himself in and reveals that it was all a hoax, allowing Dex and Lan to have their match. Later in both versions of the game, when Lan returns to Nitopia for the global tournament, he's knocked unconscious and wakes up in a hotel room that is locked without the key data, which is hidden throughout Nitopia's internet area. It would turn out that this was the preliminary for the global tournament, and it was all staged. It seems to me that this series is big on child endangerment. This extends to their navvies as well. At the beginning of Battle Network 4, Shade Man kidnaps Roll, intending to drain her of her energy. In Battle Network 5, Dr. Regal knocks out Lan and all his friends with sleeping gas, and then steals the PETs that contain Roll, Gutsman, and Glide, along with taking Lan's father hostage. There may be a few more instances that I forgot, but these are the most memorable ones to me. Yeah, a great kids game, where minors who are 11 years old and younger are frequently put in danger. Legends References Anyone who played these games will likely have spotted countless references to the Mega Man Legend series. Dolls of Data, Roll Casket, Tron Bond and the Serbots, the Serbot Rug in Yai's house, the Legends 2 poster in Land's room, the fact that Yai and Glide are references to characters from Legends 2, and so on and so on. But I think it goes even further than that. If you look closely at them, it seems that several battleship weapon sprites share some similar design elements to some of Mega Man Volnut's special weapons. The arm used for the Tornado Battle Chips looks like the Vacuum Arm attachment, some of the swords that Mega Man uses seem inspired by the Blade Arm concept art from Legends 2, and the Cannon Battle Chips look strikingly similar to the Ground Crawler weapon, also from Legends 2. Some others you may have to squint, but I see some similarities. Maybe Search Man's Scope Gun was inspired by the Spreadbuster from Legends 1? Eh, probably not. Oh, and this real-life Servbot shows up in Battle Story Rock Band EXE. Another possible entry for this iceberg that I saw somewhere else was the idea that Battle Network and Legends took place in the same universe. But I couldn't find enough evidence between the two to draw a correlation, outside of this serve bot and the fact that Yaito appears in both works, as well as several other Mega Man characters making small cameos in both the Legends and Battle Network series, on posters and such. It's a fun idea, but probably not true. Virtual Console Differences When the Battle Network series hit the Wii U Virtual Console in 2015, a number of changes were made. There were several subtle visual changes for people who have sensitive eyes. Some color palettes were toned down to be less bright, and rapid flashing effects were also toned down or dimmed so as not to cause epilepsy. The reason the palette was this shiny in the first place is likely that the first games in the Battle Network series came out early in the Game Boy Advance's lifespan, and the launch model did not have a backlight, so the screen would be dim, and brighter colors would make it easier to see. The most important change, however, is that by accessing the communications menu in Battle Network 2 through 6, you're given the opposite version and PvP exclusive battle chips, and in Battle Network 2 and 3, you get the Gospel and Punk event chips. In Battle Network 5, the mod cards for Base Cross are available, letting you activate them at any time. Aside from those, the games remain mostly unchanged. Credit to the Rockman EXE Zone forum users for documenting these differences, as well as making patches that let us apply these changes to ROMs. Naming Scheme this is a feature that has been present since the earliest days of the Rockman franchise. The Rockman and Mega Man series love to make musical references. Rockman, along with Roll, are meant to be Rock and Roll, a joke that they milked in the 90s Mega Man cartoon. You let Rock and Roll go! No! Not Rock and Roll! Why would Dr. Wily want Rock and Roll? Proto Man's Japanese name is Blues, and we also have Bass and Treble, who were Forte and Gospel in the Japanese version. Rush, Beat, and Tango are also musical themes, as are the anime-exclusive characters Slur and Trill. 
The manga author Ryo Takamasaki wrote in one of his little shorts that he thinks that blues should have a girlfriend, so he came up with rhythm, making the pairing rhythm and blues to play off of rock and roll. Sadly, Rhythm never got to actually appear in the manga, because Ryo then got curb stomped by several EXE characters who already existed but didn't appear in the manga at all. The EXE series specifically has some more puns and jokes in their naming scheme as well, going beyond just the musical references to have computer and internet jokes. LAN is wordplay for local area network. Hub is another internet term as well. The Japanese names were Neto and Saito, which would have been Net and Sight. Dex's name is short for Index. Sean's last name, Obihiro, is apparently Japanese for Wide Belt, which is meant to be a pun on Broadband, and Meiru, or Meilu, which is simply spelled as male in the games, is meant to be a pun on Email, and we have other characters and enemies that are referenced later in the iceberg. Folderback Battle Network 3 introduced Giga Chips to the series. These are battle chips that have either extremely high damage output or excellent special effects. The absolutely most overpowered chip in the entire series is the Battle Network 3 Blue Version exclusive Giga Chip, Folderback. It immediately refills your entire chip folder and reopens the custom screen. When I say the entire folder, I mean entire folder, including Folderback. You can use your chips as many times as you want, and because the first three games allowed the same program events to be used multiple times per battle, you could spam the strongest attacks in the game if you wanted. And, to make things even better, this Giga Chip has a star code, which means that it can be paired with any other battle chip. You can also put a Giga Plus Navi Customizer program on Mega Man and equip a second Giga Chip to unleash even more destruction. While several other Giga Chips returned throughout the series, like Delta Ray Edge, Omega Rocket, and the Base series, this one never returned, likely due to balancing reasons. Portal in Gospel HQ. This is a very odd moment in Battle Network 2. After defeating Freeze Man, when Mega Man returns to the Gospel HQ in Koto Square, he finds a giant swirling vortex that is spitting out evil navvies. Mega Man then proceeds to just straight up murder one of them in cold blood, only for it to be immediately replaced. Mega Man also never closes this portal, as his buster has no effect on it. We don't know where this portal leads. Where are these navvies coming from? Does the leader of Gospel even know about this? It never gets resolved. It's just kind of a loose thread that's left dangling. Net Agents In the Mega Man NT Warrior anime, three optional bosses from Battle Network 1, Mesa, Sal, and Miyu, all take up secret alter egos, calling themselves Net Agents and using the names Commander Beef, Black Rose, and Mysterio. They act as an intercept force, battling against the threats of World 3 and Grave during the early seasons. Though they are not considered officials, they apparently have battleship licenses, which allow their navvies to use battleships while inside Net City, which is normally prohibited. While the operators wear disguises to hide their identities, they make no effort to disguise their navvies, Sharkman, Woodman, and Skullman. This doesn't make a lot of sense because we see the operators using their navvies while not in their disguises. Also, Lan sees Sal in her Black Rose uniform, but without her mask, and says nothing. Is Lan just that oblivious, or does he not care? Either way, it is kinda nice to see some of the adult characters in the series taking initiative to try to keep the peace instead of always relying on Mega Man and Proto Man. Lan and Mail get married. During the end credits of Battle Network 6, a 20-year flash-forward tells us that Lan and Mail grew up, got married, and had a son named Patch. Lan becomes a scientist like his father, and Mail becomes a housewife, as far as we're told. Throughout the entire series, there has always been some romantic chemistry between the two, with Mail clearly having feelings for Lan, but Lan often being oblivious most of the time. The two of them even go on a date to a theme park in Battle Network 4. As we would see, this romance eventually blossoms, and the two live happily ever after. Ghost Navvies after a navi is deleted, fragments of their data are left behind and they wander the cyber world, occasionally materializing to attack casual bystanders. This was a means to rematch enemy navvies who had already been deleted in the game's story. What started as a game mechanic became a more or less confirmed lore factoid. In the later games, actual ghost navvies start to appear as part of the story and in side quests. BB Left Down Up This is a variable sword input in Battle Network 3, resulting in elemental sonic booms. Though the Variable Sword chip appears in multiple games, this combination and effect are exclusive to Battle Network 3. Ring.exe Ring is a Navi exclusive to Battleship Challenge and Battle Story Rockman EXE. She's operated by Mary Toa, and her primary attack is the Ring Rang. The two of them enter the Battleship Grand Prix together. Ring is also the only example of a Navi who is a gender bend of their Robot Master counterpart, who would have been Ring Man from the Classic series. I really wish that we had gotten to see Ring and Turbo Man used in games outside Battleship Challenge. Robot Master Blastman. This is the first time we actually have a character who started as a Navi and then got turned into a Robot Master. Blastman first appeared in Battle Network 6 as the first main boss, and then a Robot Master counterpart would show up in Mega Man 11 when it was released over 10 years later. 
However, both versions of Blastman fight vastly different, with Blastman EXE using fire elemented attacks and the Robot Master primarily attacking with bombs. Colonel.exe I honestly feel like I did Colonel a great disservice last time. I only talked about the bare basic knowledge, but didn't talk about his role in the story or his motivations. In Battle Network 5, Colonel is one of the two possible team leaders, the other one being Proto Man. Colonel and his operator, Beryl, head the charge against Nebula and lead their team to liberate the Cyberworld from the Dark Lord's clutches. It's heavily implied that Beryl has a personal connection to Dr. Regal, as Beryl was actually raised by Regal's father, Dr. Wily. This is what led Beryl to join World 3 during Battle Network 6, as our former comrade becomes our enemy. It's for this reason that I personally view Team Colonel as the more canon of the two Battle Network 5 stories, as Colonel's role was significantly smaller in Team Proto Man. In the anime, Colonel and Beryl were introduced during the stream arc. Beryl is an operator from 20 years in the past, and he uses technology from the present day to send Colonel through a time portal called the Past Tunnel, and he often steps in to help Mega Man whenever he's in danger. In this storyline, rather than being raised by Dr. Wily, Beryl was simply one of Wily's friends before the Doctor became a mad scientist. Beryl is one of the humans selected to bear the crest of Duo, and he and Colonel act as mediators to help defeat asteroid navvies that are sent to Earth by Slur, one of the main antagonists of the stream arc. What becomes of Colonel isn't exactly clear. At the end of the arc, in order to understand humans better, Duo allows himself to cross-fuse with Beryl, and we see that Colonel is part of the fusion, but we never see him again, despite seeing a much older Beryl, the one from present day, talking to Lan after the whole incident is over. Yeah, stream gets confusing. There was another version of Colonel from the anime, but that one's covered a bit further down the iceberg. In the manga, Colonel and Beryl play mostly the same role they did in the games, even though they did act as a temporary antagonist, trying to incarcerate Mega Man because they viewed his vast amounts of power as a threat until he could prove he was trustworthy. After Nebula is defeated, Colonel partakes in a large battle royale to decide who is worthy of the ultimate program that will be used to defeat the Psybeasts, and he is accompanied by some of the World 3 navvies from Battle Network 6. Though Colonel survives, he is heavily injured, leaving the battle to Mega Man, Lan, and Base. Base's Emblem when most people think of Base.exe, they likely think that this is his Navi mark, the gold circle with a black background and a slash mark through it. While that is the logo most often associated with him, this is not his original emblem. Based on the Mega Man NT Warrior manga, his original Navi mark seemed to depict a stylized version of the Forte musical symbol. Very fitting, since his name is Forte in the Japanese version. During the Alpha Revolt, this Navi mark was destroyed by an unnamed Navi who is using a heat blade. Although in the games, it's somewhat implied that Yamato Man may have been the one to give Base his scar, as he was one of the few Navis who was known to be a member of the Scilab Elite Corps. Despite Base having a different backstory in the anime, he retains his slash mark emblem, even though it's not a scar. Netopian Criminals both times we visit Netopia in the games, we run into problems. In Battle Network 2, on our way to the airport, a pickpocket steals all of Lan's money, and we already talked about the guy who stole Lan's battle chips. He sold the pack to Miss Millions, who we then have to battle to get our chips back. More than that, after Lan and Mega Man had a fight, Lan left his PET in the hotel room, and someone just waltzed in, jacked into the PET, damaged Mega Man, and stole Lan's passport, and you have to go on a wild goose chase to get it back. And again, in Battle Network 4, we get knocked out and abducted as part of the preliminaries for the global tournament. So yeah, rough country. Doesn't really surprise me that much, considering that the Natopian Cyberworld is connected directly to the Undernet. Battle Network 4 Spelling Errors It's a well-known meme at this point that the localized version of Mega Man Battle Network 4 is riddled with spelling and grammar errors. The most famous of these is in the Windman scenario, when Lily, Windman's operator, visits Lan's house, and Lan's mother says, What a polite young man she was. These spelling errors are so common that some Let's Players, including Shadowrock ZX here on YouTube and the contributors to the LP archive, have made a counter for all the times there's an error with the dialogue. As much as I actually like Battle Network 4, I can't deny the translation job was terrible. Crashman.exe There actually is no Crashman.exe. This is a little strange because Crashman, or Clashman if you prefer, is from Mega Man 2, the most iconic and well-loved game in the series. Every other Robot Master for Mega Man 2 got a Navi counterpart, but Crashman was left out. I can't help but wonder what he would have been like. Would they have stuck to his roots and made his design very similar to his Robot Master counterpart, like Airman, Quickman, or Cutman? Or would they have deviated from the original design and reinvented the character, like Bubble Man, Metal Man, and Stone Man? I guess we'll never know. As a kid, I imagined a rough outline of what a Crashman EXE would have been like, and just based on the name Crash and the fact that his hands look like drills, I imagined that he would have had a guard-breaking attribute, like Metal Man and Ground Man, but that's just from the mind of a kid who had way too much time on his hands. Kid Grave This is the nickname given to the leader of Gospel. The term actually comes from the English dub of the Mega Man Inti Warrior anime. The actual head of Gospel is Sean Obihiro, and the persona of Kid Grave, or Lord Gospel, is just a cybersuit used to disguise his physical appearance, until his super navvy is deleted. 
Concept art states that the Lord Gospel disguise is a magnetically shielded robe, which blends together the real and cyber worlds, which is perfectly in line with how the vast amounts of radiation in the Kotobuki apartments was warping the real and cyber worlds together. Sean was pulling the strings behind Gospel from the safety of his headquarters, rallying people together from around the world to commit crimes for him. After the Gospel virus beast is defeated, Land finds and reads Sean's diary, depicting his tragic backstory of how his parents died in a plane crash, and then he was forced to live with abusive relatives. Land then proceeds to ask to be Sean's first friend. Later on, it's revealed that, via the cyber world, Dr. Wily was actually controlling Sean the entire time, meaning that Wily was the real mastermind behind Gospel. In Battleship Challenge, Sean enters the Battleship Grand Prix, operating Freeze Man. Dr. Wily manipulating Sean from behind the scenes is reflected in the anime, as Sean is completely absent and Kid Grave is instead an android used to serve as the figurehead for Grave until Wily decides to make his public return. Even Kid Grave himself didn't realize that he was just a robot until Wily pointed out and then deactivated him. After the Grave virus beast was destroyed, Base took over Kid Grave's robot body and used it to move around in the real world, even being able to jack himself into the cyber world by grabbing the wires inside a computer. In the NT Warrior manga, Sean makes an appearance very similar to the games, although first going under the fake name of Keiyuki. The persona of Kid Grave was just a hologram used to disguise his real self, which he lets disappear when he's cornered by Shod aboard the SS Queen Ocean Liner. After the battle on board, which saw the destruction of both Base and the Grave Virus Beast, Sean would later return to aid Mr. Famous and other net battlers in their mission against the Dark Navvies. It is stated that he was being controlled while acting as the leader of Grave, but we don't know exactly who it was, because Dr. Wily presumably died earlier on in the manga, and he never appeared again after the Life Virus was deleted. It's possible that it was the Quartet of Evil, or maybe the Dark Lords themselves, but we never really find out. In Battle Story Rock Band EXE, Sean is once again behind the Gospel Net Mafia, but Kid Grave is now merely a projection on a screen, which Sean controls from his laptop. Basically, Sean made his Lord Gospel persona into a VTuber. Name Changes This is a wide category, but I think it's worth covering. A lot of the characters had their names changed in between the English and Japanese versions. Some of the basics are Mega Man, who was Rockman, and Bass, who was Forte. But there are several others as well. Battle Network 5 had a character named Footman, who was localized as Gridman, both of which are just references to American football, since Gridman is a football player-style navvy. Swallowman was localized as Larkman, and he was a bird-type navvy. While a swallow is a type of bird, this name could lead to some unfortunate innuendos. Alpha's original name was Proto, but since Proto-Man is already in the English version, it makes more sense to call it Alpha. Even though Aquaman kept his original name in Battle Network 4, when Battle Network 6 was localized, they changed his name to Spoutman so as not to confuse him with the DC superhero of the same name. Eraseman's original name was Killerman. Not gonna lie, Eraseman sounds way cooler. But the worst one to me was Japan Man, who was named Yamato Man in the Japanese version. His Robot Master counterpart also shared the original name. Most of the main human characters had name changes too. As I said earlier, Lan's original name was Neto, Shod was Enzan, Mail was Meru, which is basically the same thing, Dex was Dekau, Yai was Yaito, Higsby was Higure, Count Zap was Count Electric, Miss Mad was Madoi, Miss Mari was Miss Mariko, and Miss Yuri was Miss Yuriko. Even though in Battle Network 2, they do reference Count Zap, but they call him by his Japanese name, and Miss Mari is referenced in Battle Network 5, but she's called Miss Mariko. There were several battle chips that had name changes as well. Hero Sword used to be called Paladin Sword. The Fireburner chip from Battle Network 6 was originally called Hell's Burner, and Forte's Hell's Rolling was respelled as Hell's Rolling. These are just a few instances, but there are countless other examples. Right-Handed Megabuster not really deep lore related, but just an observation that out of all of the main incarnations of Mega Man, EXE is the only one to canonically have the Mega Buster on his right hand. The other four main ones, Classic, X, Volnut, and Star Force, all have their Mega Busters on their left arms. Yes, I am aware that both Classic and X can use two Busters at once. But looking at Mega Man's final smash in the Smash Bros. series, these four Mega Man use their left arms as their Buster arm, but EXE still has his on his right hand. Even looking at the sprites from each respective game, when the sprites aren't simply mirror-flipped, Classic and X both use their left arms for their main buster, and EXE still uses his right. Just a funny little observation. Classic Theme Remixes There are some music tracks in the EXE series that are remixes of the stage themes from the Classic series. All of the playable navvies in Rockman EXE 4.5 have remixes of their themes set as the PET home screen theme, and Fireman and Pharaohman both get remixes of their themes in Network Transmission. I just love little throwbacks like this. Chaos Unison I think I already covered what Chaos Unisons do in-game well enough, but we didn't talk about the manga version. When Tomahawk Man and Mega Man attack Nebula's base, Nebula Grey infects Tomahawk Man with Dark Power. In order to snap him out of it, Mega Man activates his Double Soul, but this causes Mega Man to enter a Darkened Tomahawk Soul mode. The Dark Power eventually corrupts Mega Man's physical form as well, until Land manages to give Mega Man the willpower to overcome the darkness. 
Chaos Unison did not appear at all in the anime, as far as I'm aware. Z Saber. Zero's iconic sword from the Mega Man Zero series, brought to Mega Man Battle Network. This battle chip first appeared as a prize for defeating and sparing Zero in network transmission. While this version of the chip depicts EXE Zero on the artwork, every future version of this chip uses Zero's appearance from the Mega Man Zero games. This blade attacks with three slashes, one long, one wide, and one hero sword length, as well as an optional shockwave with a button input. Initially, it was believed that the only way to obtain this chip in Battle Network 4 was to link the game to Mega Man Zero 3, but earlier this year, Gregamaster, one of the top ROM hackers of the Rockman EXE Zone forums, recently discovered a lotto code that would yield the Z-Saber, even in unmodded versions of the game. The code for this chip still exists in Battle Network 6, but is inaccessible without hacking. The battle chip did also appear in the Mega Man NT Warrior manga and anime, both times being wielded by Proto Man and taking the form of a handheld sword, similar to how it's wielded by the legendary Reploid himself. Fan submitted navvies. The Mega Man franchise is no stranger to using fan creations for its bosses. This practice even goes as far back as Mega Man 2 on the NES, the most iconic game in the whole IP. While most of these fan made robot masters would go on to become navvies, there's also a plethora of fan created EXE exclusive characters, including Larkman, Gridman, Gateman, Kendoman, Kingman, Videoman, Mistman, Bullman, Cosmoman, Judgeman, Elementman, Circusman, and my personal favorite EXE character, Laserman. In addition to that, Clockman.exe from Operation Shooting Star is actually based on a fan submission for a Mega Man Star Force boss, and the original name was Clock Genius. I always like seeing these fan ideas being used in official works, and it brought us some of the best bosses in the series. Drillman and Pikman, two anime exclusive characters. They first appeared as competitors in the M1 Grand Prix. Pikman and Drillman. They were supposed to battle against Stoneman and Blasterman, but they were ambushed while training and were too damaged to compete. Drillman's name is actually incorrect. The Japanese name was supposed to be Drill Mock, not Drill Man. This was botched in the English dub. I can understand why it happened though, as the anime was actually being aired before EXE 3 was released, and Battle Network 3 was the first game that featured Drillman.exe. The real Drill Man would appear later on in the anime and would be defeated by Proto Man. When Pikman and Drill Mock reappeared in the Access episode Allegro, Pikman correctly calls Drill Mock Drill Maha, which is how it's pronounced in Japanese, but it sounds kind of funny saying this in English. Drill Maha, help me! memory limitations. It's been stated numerous times that content had to be cut from nearly every game in the series due to space limitations on the ROM. Some immediate examples are Duo Soul and Forte Soul from Battle Network 4, and this is often used as an explanation as to why so much extra content, outside the Boktai crossover, was cut from the localized version of Battle Network 6. Reportedly, the English script took up so much space that they had to remove two additional internet areas. I have yet to find a source to confirm this claim, however. Another sacrifice to this limitation is listed further down the iceberg, and will be explained later. Now, this next part is more so a personal theory, and I haven't seen anything confirming this, but I think that space limitations may be the reason why Mega Man's animations became more simplified starting with Battle Network 4. It's already been confirmed that this is why they went with smaller sprites, so that they took up less room in the ROM. We see that during the early games, we have him using things like hammers, pickaxes, giant fists, and roundhouse kicks, but all these were removed from the second half of the series. This is probably because, starting with Battle Network 4, the developers had to start incorporating full sprite sheets, not just for Mega Man's new transformations, the Double Souls, but also for the navvies that provided said Double Souls. This was likely due to the Operation Battle gimmick, where the 12 Double Soul navvies were playable, and thus needed to share every animation that Mega Man could normally do. If you remember my comment on Battle Chip Challenge from the previous Iceberg video, I said that the animations were awkward because the boss characters didn't have full sprite sheets that matched the Battleship animations. Well now, several of them did, and this would continue on throughout the rest of the series. Space limitations could also be why the cross system only gave Mega Man a new bust over his base form instead of a whole new sprite sheet. Smaller files save space. And for those curious, if you look at the sprites in-game, Mega Man's style changes aren't actually a separate sprite sheet, but they're different animation offsets within the same base sprite that Mega Man uses. Again, this is just more of a personal hunch, but if this has been confirmed anywhere, someone please let me know. Anime Censorship The Rockman EXE anime was localized as Mega Man Anti Warrior, and it has the curse of being an anime brought to North America in a post-9-11 world, and it suffered a lot of censorship. Several characters' names were changed, for better and for worse. Fireman was renamed Torchman. I think that one actually sounds cooler. But Bombman, on the other hand, was renamed Blasterman. When I hear Blaster, I think about laser guns and transformers, not bombs. Though I will acknowledge that this is likely a reference to blasting with dynamite. But this would get confusing when Battle Network 6 came out years later and we had Blastman. The strangest one, though, is Multanic Man, which is the localized name for Napalm Man. What even is Multanic? I can't seem to find a definition for it outside Urban Dictionary. 
Maybe it's supposed to be a combination of molten, which means melted, and volcanic. I guess it makes sense because Napalm Man is a fire-type Navi who uses fire bombs. To make it even stranger, there is an unused voice line in the DS version of Battle Network 5 where Lan uses the name Multanic Man instead of Napalm Man. Multanic Man! Let's do it, Multanic Man! Double Soul! Multanic Soul! Chaos Unison! Multanic Chaos! This line was not used in the final version of the game, however. In addition to that, Color Man's name was changed to Wacko Man. I think this one's a bit more fitting, since Wacko Man seems to fit the whole clown aesthetic that he and Matty go for, as opposed to just being called Color Man. But it may go a little bit deeper than that. Apparently, in the Japanese version, Color Man's name was Colored Man. For those who aren't familiar with American history, the term colored person or colored people is seen as politically incorrect to some when used to describe people of non-Caucasian lineage. There have been changes in sensibility over the years, and exact wording is important, but as it is offensive to some, and given when these came out, the early 2000s, I think that this is likely the reason it was changed during localization. Needleman.exe appeared in Network Transmission with his name unchanged, but in the English version of Access, he was renamed to Spike Man, most likely so as not to draw references to drugs or hypodermic needles. I don't mind this one so much, those definitely look more like spikes than needles to me. Gospel was renamed to Grave, as Gospel is often tied to the Christian faith, and making biblical references in kids' cartoons and anime here in the States is forbidden. And yet Digimon got away with it somehow. Also, Beast Man was renamed Savage Man. This is probably to distance him from the Beast Man character from the He-Man franchise. Similarly, Aquaman had his name changed to Spout Man in both the anime and the localized version of Battle Network 6, so as to avoid confusion with the DC superhero. I think the same could probably be said for Star Man, whose name was changed to Nova Man. Apparently, Plant Man is also the name of a Marvel character, so Plantman.exe got renamed to Vine Man. What, does he like to make six second long viral videos? Next thing you know, they'll localize Clockman as TikTok Man. Other name changes were added, but I think these were more likely for lip syncing purposes as opposed to censorship, since when translating dialogue to English, lip syncing with the footage doesn't always match. Metal Man was renamed Heavy Metal Man, Junk Man was renamed Junk Data Man, and Wind Man was renamed Wind Blast Man. Again, I think these were just for lip syncing. The anime censored a lot of other features as well, including the names of several battle chips. Shotgun was changed to Blaster, Blaster Battleship. which again makes Bomb Man's name even more confusing. Cannon was changed to Laser Blast, despite High Cannon and Mega Cannon remaining unchanged. Laser Blast, High Cannon, Cannon, chips in. Guts Man's Guts Punch was changed to Guts Thump, Super Guts Thump, which is absolutely stupid. So is Mega Man thumping Guts Man repeatedly here? Search Man's Scope Gun was renamed the Scope Blaster, and when Miss Yuri was going to shoot Miss Mari, she was holding what she called a Neural Disruptor. I have a Neural Disruptor, so if you don't do what I say, I'll overload your central nervous system. But it's clearly a gun, and the visual edit here looks awful. It looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint, although to be fair, the uncensored gun looks incredibly flat as well. Gundam Seed's run on Toonami did a similar thing, but better, and Yu-Gi-Oh!'s gun censorship is a well-known meme at this point. They were never allowed to say the word bomb, Things like Mini Bomb were renamed Mini Boomer. Mini Boomer, fire Boomer, fire Boomer, Freeze Boomer. Additionally, they were not allowed to show a lot of physical impacts when it came to characters striking one another, so they would simply edit these scenes where a white flash replaced the frames that would show the impact, or simply cut away before the character was hit. Like in the episode Evil Empress Roll, Roll is supposed to slap Mega Man and knock him down, but they cut the footage before the impact and just show him falling on his butt. This kind of editing is especially noticeable in the early episodes. Justice League did the same thing. Like, watch this. The white flash seems to emphasize the impact of the hit, but in NT Warrior, the flash actually has a build-up fade-out before the hit lands, and it looks awful. I know what you're thinking. Did 4Kids localize this? Actually, no. It was Viz Media. At this rate, I'd actually say the 4Kids would have been an improvement. In addition to that, they censored nearly every single sword-type weapon. At first, it wasn't that noticeable, since the blades of most of the swords were not standard steel color, so I thought it was just like a lightsaber effect or something. But when you see Shadow Man's katana or King Man's pawn swords all fuzzed out, that raises some eyebrows, and it looks terrible. Of course, anything implying that a human was physically being injured was also cut. When Shade Man impales Cross-Fusion Laser Man with his claws, the shot cuts away, not letting us see the carnage. They also added a fuzz effect over some of the injuries on Navis as well, despite it not looking anywhere close to organic, as is just pixels and data. It's most noticeable when Shade Man loses his arms. They apparently also didn't like to show anything that looked close to a gun, as several times when Mega Man or another Navi is pointing his buster or a cannon towards the screen, they cut a second or two from the localized version, as well as other somewhat extreme violence, like Stone Man getting stabbed in the eye, Elect Man getting impaled, or Magnet Man getting shot in the face. This just leads to some choppy editing and confusing moments later. 
Why is Stone Man's eye all damaged if we didn't actually see him take the damage in the English version? They also have some scenes that were cut so close that one frame of the shot they were trying to censor shows up in the final product. During the fight with Magnet Man, Mega Man is supposed to have a targeting reticle in preparation to blast him with a program advance, but they remove that in the dub, even though you can still see one frame of the shot. I'm sure that there's more, but these are some of the most egregious examples. We also get the basic kids anime localization nonsense, like calling food by the wrong name. Nobody in the world makes better cupcakes than my mom! Those are jelly donuts. Uh, I mean rice balls. I was talking about the stew. Stew! That's curry. This is made even worse by the fact that curry becomes a recurring food in the series, even in localization. I don't want localization changes, but if you're going to make them, at least be consistent. And let's be honest, what American kid watching this in the early 2000s would even know what curry was unless you were already a weeb? At least with curry, it could pass as like a beef stew or something. Let's have spaghetti for dinner tonight. Uh -huh. That's clearly not spaghetti. The sauce is white, not red. At least call it Alfredo or something. What does the Japanese version say? Oh, looks like I was wrong on this one. But who in the world eats spaghetti with a spoon? Some of the name changes were brought to the localized manga as well. The YouTuber Hensama has made a series of videos talking about the censorship for the first season of NT Warrior, and I'll link those in the description. Avengers reference. While posting in the Center Square's BBS, we see someone named Iron Man make a few posts. So the games can get away with having shared names with Marvel and DC characters, but the anime can't. Good to know. Prism Man. Prism Man is a character exclusive to the anime. He is operated by Goro Misaki, and these were the first two to attempt cross-fusion. Even though they failed at first, when they were later exposed to dark chips, the pair did achieve a successful cross-fusion. Fortunately, after being defeated by Mega Man, the two were put on the path to recovery, and Prism Man helped drive away Asteroid Bomb Man when he attacked the hospital's computer. Prism Man's gimmick is that he uses the Prism Battle Chip, which, when attacked, will disperse the damage to all the surrounding targets. His primary weapons are twin Tomfa that also serve as cannons, which he makes good use of during the battle with Gravity Man. He defeated the Dark Lord using Dark Prism, which apparently seals the target inside a labyrinth constructed of light inside an alternate dimension of the cyber world. Honestly, out of every anime-exclusive character, I think Prism Man has my favorite design, and I would love to see him appear in something like Rockman X Dive. Tori Freud Remember how I mentioned earlier that Freud has a son? Well, in the anime version, they actually gave him a name and made him a member of the main cast. His name is Tori in the English version, and Toru in the Japanese version. He's the operator of Iceman, and in their debut episode, they were the ones sabotaging the waterworks because his father was being held captive. So they basically pulled a role reversal. Also, anyone else notice that his hoodie in the early seasons seems to be a reference to Shotgun Ice from Mega Man X? Rush, Tango, and Beat. Three robot pets from the classic series brought to the world of Battle Network. Rush first appeared as a virus in Battle Networks 1 and 2, and would give you the pop-up battle chip, or Recovery 300, in network transmission. While in the Japanese version, the virus was named Rush, it was called Mole in the English release. There was a second, red version of this virus called Serious Rush, or Mole 2. Starting with the third game, Rush would then become a Navi Customizer program along with Tango and Beat. They would serve as PvP support, activating their effects if certain circumstances were met. If the enemy uses an Invisible-type battle chip, Rush attacks the enemy, eats the battle chip, and then paralyzes them. Beat steals the opponent's Mega or Giga chip, and Tango will restore Mega Man's HP by 300 and give him a barrier 100 if his HP drops into the red. In Battle Network 6, Rush could also be summoned in certain areas using Rush food to create a Rush road, making shortcuts across gaps in the floor. In the anime, Rush is Roll's pet Cyberdog, which was given to her by Dr. Ikari. He apparently has the ability to go between the real and cyber worlds at will. This ability led to him getting kidnapped by Bubble Man and having his powers exploited, turning him into the Rush Synchro Chip, which allowed Shade Man to enter the real world without a dimensional area. This special Synchro Chip is what enabled Mail and Roll to perform a cross-fusion later in the series. Apparently, the original design for this incarnation of Rush was supposed to be used in Mega Man Legends, and he didn't get along well with Data. However, the idea was scrapped and repurposed for EXE. Dark Chips are Industrialized Evil Energy I don't think that I was incorrect in my assessment last time about dark chips containing fragments of digitized evil human souls, but Mimer Deluxe pointed out that entries that were written in red on the previous iceberg were entries that were based on rumors that didn't have a concrete answer. It also turns out that evil energy is actually a reference to Mega Man 8. That reference flew completely over my head. Though I am a lifelong Mega Man fan, most of my time has been spent playing basically every other series but classic. I don't dislike classic, but I've just spent more time on the others. But yeah, in Mega Man 8, Duo, a robot from space, is programmed to hunt down and destroy all evil and evil energy. Prolonged exposure to evil energy can harm people and robots with good hearts, similar to dark chips. This kind of delves into the idea that Battle Network exists on the same timeline as classic Mega Man, but we'll touch on that later. 
In the stream arc of the anime, evil energy is mentioned by Slur, described to be materialized selfish human desires, which was amplified by the asteroid navies sent by Slur to aid humans with their selfish endeavors, and this energy is used in an attempt to activate Duo's comet to erase the Earth. This incarnation of evil energy shares no correlation with dark chips outside some of the asteroid navies using the same bodies as some of the dark loids from Access. Ferroman.exe Ferroman is an interesting character in the Battle Network series because every incarnation of him is completely different, and he never plays the same role twice. In the games, Ferroman serves as a secret bonus boss in Battle Network 1 and 2, but a required story boss in Network Transmission. During his chapter, Mega Man states that the data from Ferroman's area is extremely old, so old that it may not even work on modern computers. In the anime, Ferroman was basically given Alpha's backstory from Battle Network 3, he was the control center for all of Psylab, which meant that he would run the entire cyber world, and was created by Lan's grandfather, Tadashi Ikari. However, it was discovered that a virus infected Pharaoh-Man, and Psylab feared that he would be too strong to control, so they sealed him away inside an isolated silicon chip. In the English dub, they say that there was a flaw in his programming that made Pharaoh-Man become too power-hungry, thus causing Psylab to panic, but in the original Japanese version, it is stated to be a virus. During the finals of the M1 Grand Prix, Mega Man and Proto Man's battle gets so violent and destructive that Pharaoh Man is released from his prison, and he then proceeds to delete Mega Man. Pharaoh Man then sets his sights on taking revenge on humanity for betraying him, planning to destroy human society so that only he, and any Navi who will follow him, remains. He's shown to be extremely powerful, taking concentrated attacks from a literal army of Navis all at once, and even reactivating Psylab's control systems from within, even though they're supposed to be completely taken offline. After Lan and his friends manage to recover Mega Man's data and install it in a new frame, he and Proto Man team up to battle Pharaoh Man. Though he survived a double program advance, Pharaoh Man was weakened enough to be captured by World 3. Rather than allowing himself to be used by Dr. Wily, Pharaoh Man self-destructs, taking the World 3 base down with him. This arc serves as the basis for the Mega Man NT Warrior board game, with defeating Pharaoh Man being the main objective of the game. But his story doesn't end there. Dr. Wily survived the World 3 hideout exploding and took the fragments of Pharaoh Man's ultimate program and reformatted them into the Grey Virus Beast. Pharaoh Man's personality components and the rest of his soul, however, reformed into a new Navi. And that Navi is Base.exe. This is honestly my least favorite incarnation of Base because of this fact. Due to Battle Network 3 being released while the anime was airing, the storylines diverged, and the showrunners likely didn't have Alpha or Base's backstory from the games to work with, so they essentially gave both roles to Pharaoh Man. In an attempt to become whole again, Base tries to absorb the ultimate program from the Grey Virus Beast, but he seems to be unsuccessful. The NT Warrior manga presents us with a much more benign version of the character, as Pharaoh Man exists merely as a guardian of an ancient treasure. All who seek it must battle against four legendary warriors, equipped with the style change ability. Though Pharaoh Man himself is not nearly as malevolent as his other counterparts, his pyramid is still riddled with traps and deadly viruses. Also, he is apparently from a civilization that supposedly predates modern day by tens of thousands of years. While this is the only instance of this we see in the manga, it does play into the idea of super-advanced prehistoric civilizations like Mu from the Mega Man Star Force series. Heck, Mu is even referenced in this manga, even though Star Force wasn't out at this point. During the trial, Mega Man and Lan obtain the power of Hubstyle and accidentally delete Pharaoh Man and the four legendary warriors in a terrifying display of power. Pharaoh Man is not angry, however, only wishing that this power be used to carve a newer and brighter future for the net and mankind. Vision Bursts one of the big plot points from Battle Network 5, Vision Bursts are basically image data that saves a particular moment of time from the real world, but only accessible in the cyber world. At various points in the game, you enter separate Vision Bursts that take you to the past, and you get to explore specific areas of ACDC Town, Oran Isle, and Scilab. The portal to each Vision Burst looks like a large blue door. It is kind of surreal to be in ACDC Town's past, as Lan and Hub had apparently just been born at this moment, and Yai's house wasn't even built yet. The Scilab Vision Burst is practically the same as the image data of Scilab inside Alpha from Battle Network 3's ending, making this a very nice throwback. Visiting the past helps Lan and Mega Man learn the secrets of Nebula's Soulnet project. Speaking of... Soulnet. This was a project started by Dr. Tadashi Hikari and Dr. Wily. The purpose behind it was to allow human souls to be linked together to create a better sense of understanding and kinship among all humanity. However, the pair knew that they would not be able to finish the project and decided to leave it up to their descendants, Yuichiro Hikari and Dr. Regal. The pair of scientists split the plans for Soulnet in two, and the Hikari program took on its own form, turning into a cyber dog named Gao. The Nebula set out to capture this program so that Dr. Regal could complete Soulnet and use it to taint the world with evil. Using smaller soul servers, Dr. Regal then transmitted the Soulnet wavelength, infected with fragments of Nebula Grey, the program of darkness and hatred, to incite chaos across Electopia, causing everyone to act erratic. 
Eventually, Dr. Regal managed to construct a soul server that will cover the entire Earth, which he activates during the climax of the game, but Lan is protected from its effects due to a magnometal amulet that was made by his grandfather, as magnometal is the only known material that can block the soul wavelength. After the battle with Nebula Grey, the soul server, as well as the Nebula base, begins to self-destruct. After the heroes escape, Dr. Wily confronts Regal and reactivates Soul Server, causing it to overload, and uses it to erase the last 10 years of his son's memories so that he would not fall onto the path of evil. While the sentiment that Wily doesn't want his son to follow in his footsteps of being an evil scientist is sweet, it's a shame that Soulnet didn't end up being used the way it was originally intended. I bet that a perfected version of this concept could have led to untold powers within Mega Man. Quizzes it's a recurring element of the Battle Network series to have a series of quizzes to complete in order to earn various prizes. Most of the time, there are three stages of quiz. They are Mr. Quiz, or Quiz Kid, Quiz Master, and Quiz King. The strangest instance of this was in Battle Network 2, where an old man claiming to be the Quiz King apparently got possessed by a spirit when he was a kid, and has been in the dungeon of the Natopia Castle this whole time, waiting for someone to complete his quiz and let him pass on to the afterlife. Asteroid Navvies during the stream arc of the anime, Duo has decided to judge the Earth and decide whether humanity should be destroyed or spared. He sends his herald, Slur, to interact with humans, and gives them a means to fulfill any selfish desires they may have. These means are called Asteroid Navvies, or simply Asteroids. Asteroid Navvies take the form of Navvies that previously existed in the anime, and most of the time they are based on the Dark Lords from Access. Although some early arc navvies appeared as asteroids too, like Stone Man and Bomb Man, this sets up the primary villains of the week for the stream arc. While all these navvies appeared earlier in the series, the asteroid versions of the navvies would often be paired up with the original operators they had in the games, like Video Man with Vidi Narsi, Beast Man with Inukai, and Napalm Man with Firefox. Slur states that asteroid navvies aren't necessarily evil, but rather are a means to an end, and that any havoc wreaked by them is due to the evil and selfish desires of the operator. This runs contrary to what Slur says about how asteroid navvies have the ability to amplify evil and selfish desires within humans, so it seems that the asteroids were used by Slur to set up humanity for failure, stacking the deck against them, so to speak. I get that it was meant to be a test, but when the test itself is cheating, well, that's just a dick move. While I do like the idea of Asteroid Navvies bringing back some characters who may not have gotten enough screen time, I do think that it's a little bit lazy, given that they are all recycled characters. I guess it can't be helped when every arc of the anime up to this point has had upwards of 50 episodes. Gotta cut corners somewhere, I guess. Sealed Off Moves In Battle Network 4, during the Kendo Man scenario, we learn that Mr. Famous apparently had to expel one of his former net battle students who had great potential but was too ambitious and let his power go to his head. So when he was kicked out, Mr. Famous apparently sealed off his moves. This line is repeated by the former student, saying that ever since then, he hasn't even been able to defeat something as simple as a Metar. So, unless Mr. Famous did to his student what Aang did to Ozai, and this isn't just a horribly botched translation, what does he mean by sealing off his moves? If it affects his virus busting in such a way, then maybe it has to do with the ex-student's PET or Navi? We know that Mr. Famous helped develop the current generation of PET, and we have seen instances of PETs being modded or hacked before. In the same game, Lance P.E.T. gets hacked to make him stuck with a very bad ship folder, and in the manga, his P.E.T. has a lock put on it so that he can't jack Mega Man into the cyber world until the lock is removed. Furthermore, if we take into account the idea that Rockman EXE 4.5 is supposedly how canonical Navi operation works, maybe the controls on the operating system were tampered with so that the Navi either wouldn't function properly or his P.E.T. just can't use battle chips anymore? Maybe Battle Operation is a program run by navvies during net battles? Land and Mega Man are always shouting, Battle Routine Set, and Execute, so maybe there is a reason for it? But what's to stop the guy from just buying a new PET or navvy? Maybe Mr. Famous used his influence to have him blacklisted from every possible store, as well as to the officials? Mr. Famous does travel the world, and he gets around quite a bit. This whole spat during the game takes place in Netfrica, after all. But what if it wasn't based on the PET or navvy? What if Mr. Famous physically disabled the guy's hands so that he couldn't operate his PET properly? In the game, during the Cold Man scenario, if the temperature gets too low, Lan will comment about how his hands are going numb, and the next time you enter a battle without raising the temperature, you won't be able to use battle chips. Maybe Mr. Famous damaged this guy's arms. This could explain why he said to the hostages, watch as I take away Mr. Famous's ability to fight. And then it looks like he kicked Mr. Famous in the nuts or something. Either way, I can't figure out what this actually means. The Mega Man knowledge base just has a brief reference to the situation. I'd like to look at the original Japanese transcript to see if there was a mistranslation or something. This is Battle Network 4, after all, which basically has the worst localization in the whole series. EXE Navvies on Star Force Battle Cards As a nice throwback to the Battle Network series, some navvies are shown on battle cards in the Star Force games. On the Life Aura Giga Class card in Star Force 1, you can see a shadowy figure that's clearly meant to be base. And in Star Force 3, the Swordfighter battle card series has Proto Man's shadow in the background. Both of these are extremely fitting, as Life Aura was one of Base's trademark abilities, and Swordfighter lets you strike with a very quick combo of sword slashes. 
Serenade. In addition to acting as the super boss for Battle Network 3, Serenade actually plays a very large role behind the scenes. The entire Undernet rankings gauntlet is based around the fact that Serenade is number one. Once Mega Man defeats Mist Man or Bull Man and gains the title of number two, Serenade grants him the Giga Freeze program to use on Alpha to prevent its reawakening. This program is absorbed by Base, however, leading Mega Man to battle Alpha's core directly. After defeating Base, Mega Man not only gains the ability to fight Base GS, but also to participate in the Serenade time trials, where Mega Man challenges a copy of all of the boss navvies in the game, minus Serenade and Base. Completing this time trial will earn you the Serenade chip in white version, or Dark Aura in blue version. In Ryo Takemisaki's Mega Man NT Warrior manga, Serenade appears when Dark Power threatens the real world. Serenade gives Proto Man the Muramasa Blade as a means to battle the Dark Navvies, and bestows upon Mega Man the ability to use Double Soul. Serenade combating the darkness is a departure from the games, as in Battle Network 3, Serenade states that they are a Dark Navi, which is reflected in how Serenade's battle chip is classified as a Dark Chip. However, Serenade is a Navi of so much power that they were unable to fully materialize in the real world, and were not operating at their maximum potential, so they were easily deleted and absorbed by the revived base GS. It's later revealed that Serenade was actually close friends with Colonel, and we see this manifest when Colonel uses the Giga Freeze program to seal the portal to the Dark World, and how Colonel takes up a personal vendetta against Base, wanting to avenge his fallen friend. Serenade's ghost continues to haunt Base, not out of malice, but in an attempt to get Base to open his heart to others. Serenade appears in Battle Story Rockman EXE as well, although I can't really say what kind of role they play there because this manga isn't in English, which means that I can't read it. Ultimate Programs this is mostly a plot device used in the anime. It basically just means that the Navi in question has higher potential than other Navis, and they may have a few unique abilities. The six characters confirmed to have an ultimate program are Mega Man, Proto Man, Pharaoh Man, Base, the Gray Virus Beast, and Iris. Mega Man's ultimate program manifests as his ability to access Style Change, and then later, Double Soul. When the Grave Virus Beast was absorbing the Cyber World and had already eaten Proto Man, Mega Man's ultimate program managed to overpower both its and Proto Man's ultimate programs at the same time, and after destroying the Virus Beast, Mega Man rebuilt the Cyber World. It's possible that this ability to draw power from those who freely give it, which leads to Double Soul, could also be what allowed Cross Fusion Mega Man to absorb the power from all the Navi's Dr. Regal had captured and then use it against Cross Fusion Laser Man. Proto Man's ultimate program doesn't seem to have a solid manifestation other than just extremely high skills as a net battler and large amounts of power. Pharaoh Man's ultimate program seems to be tied to network control, as he was able to reboot Scilab's system after they were completely taken offline from within. After Pharaoh Man was deleted, his data was reformed into base, and the rest of the ultimate program was used to create the Grave Virus Beast. Wanting to be whole, base tried to absorb the beast, but its current body couldn't handle the vast amounts of data. It also seemed that Base's ability to absorb data takes influence from the Get Ability program in the games. He uses this ability to try to absorb Mega Man and Proto Man's ultimate programs, and when he succeeds in getting his hands on Mega Man's, the two merge together to become Base Cross. After the fusion breaks, Base absorbed what was left of Nebula Grey. The Grey Virus Beast has the same ability as Base, absorbing data to get stronger. It's likely that when Base tried to absorb the Virus Beast, that he managed to copy pieces of the ultimate program and gain back a fragment of his power. As for Iris, her ultimate program allows her to enter the real world and cyber worlds at will. She also has the ability to calm down navvies that are in a beast out mode. In the manga, Iris has the ultimate program as well, but it simply exists as a power source that gives beast out Mega Man enough power to stand up to the world absorbing double Psy Beast, as well as allowing him and Land to resist being absorbed. Growing Servers when you reach Gospel's hideout in Kotobukiya, you find that there is a dangerous amount of radiation being given off from the apartment building in the middle of town. The cause is apparently all the servers in the various rooms, being used to power Gospel's headquarters. When you get into the building, you find that Lan's friends were already there, scouting ahead, and they mention that the servers are literally growing from all the radiation. You can see this when you enter the rooms, as the servers appear to be growing out of the floor. The texture on the floor panels is the same as the top of the servers, and some of them are only halfway up. First, a spooky portal that spits out evil navvies that never gets closed, then the Quiz King Ghost possesses a kid on vacation, and now we have computer servers literally growing out of the floor. The more I revisit Battle Network 2, the more WTF moments I find. I have no clue how to justify this one. Maybe the blending of the cyber world and human world due to all of the radiation is causing reverse digitization? Like, instead of objects being digitized, physical objects are manifesting in the real world from the cyber world, and literally building new servers to keep the power growing? I have no idea at this point. Mega Man figures in-game We already talked about the Legends dolls in the games, but there are also several instances where EXE characters are shown as action figures. In Land's room in Battle Network 3, we see some figures from the Rockin' Action toy line on Land's desk, as well as some rock cubes on the floor. In Battle Network 2, 
Dex has a figure of Gutsman on top of his TV, as well as a Gutsman poster on his bookshelf. Now these aren't figures, but in Battle Network 4, we also see that Higsby has hung up posters of Base and Serenade in his shop, as well as posters of Mega Man, Roll, and Proto Man in Battle Network 5. Additionally, after you defeat each boss in Network Transmission, Land gains a new figure reflecting that boss. In the context of the games, I suppose those figures could be homemade. Even though these games look like they came out in the early 2000s, I don't think the technology of something like a 3D printer is too far-fetched in this world. However, in the stream arc of the anime, we see that Mr. Famous has figurines of several EXE characters, including Gutsman, Roll, Protoman, and several others. Maybe it's because all of them, except for Aquaman, participated in the M1 Grand Prix and had merchandise made of them? If that's the case, then why aren't they receiving any royalties? Sounds like they need to consult a lawyer. Virus Breeder in Battle Network 3, after a certain point in the story, you gain access to a virus breeder in Scilab, which lets you tame certain viruses by defeating said encounters in the cyber world or taking them from requests, or adopting them from some of the missions on the request BBS, and after you feed them enough bug frags, you are given a battle chip that summons the pet virus to attack for you. This idea is revisited in EXE 4.5, where some female navvies offer to let you battle against their pet viruses, and in Battle Network 6, where you can defeat rare viruses and gain their data, which lets you enter them into pet virus battles for some rare rewards. Iris.exe Iris makes an appearance in both the Beast arc of the Rockman EXE anime as well as the Mega Man NT Warrior manga. In the manga, she acts as the mediator for the battle royale among the powerful navvies who were summoned to the underground. The point of this tournament is to decide who the most powerful navvy is, and they would be bestowed with the ultimate program to defeat Gregar and Falzar. She apparently can only be seen by those she chooses to appear before. She still is said to be Colonel's sister, but this opens up a few more questions. Firstly, if she and Colonel are siblings and she carries the ultimate program aside of her, then what does that make Colonel? And secondly, how do she and Colonel have a tie to the Psybeasts? It's never really explained and just serves as something of a plot device to give Mega Man more power to stand up to the combined Psybeast. In the anime, she again has a tie to the Psybeasts in that she can apparently help Mega Man control his beast out state. Like in the games, she can appear in the real world using a copybot. However, this one is merged with her data so that it completely digitizes when she moves between the real and cyber worlds. And while she's in the cyber world, she actually has a net navvy form. Iris shares a few other similarities to her game counterpart, but those are spoilers for points later in the iceberg. Duel Masters Crossover You thought that Boktai was the weirdest thing that Battle Network ever did a crossover with? Think again. The Rockman EXE series also had a crossover with Duel Masters, of all things. In Battle Network 5, there are two Giga Class battle chips based on Duel Masters. One is the Phoenix, and the other is the Death Phoenix, and are in Team Colonel and Team Proto Man, respectfully. There was also a short film included with the Rockman EXE movie, Program of Light and Darkness, that depicts Cross Fusion Mega Man teaming up with Shobu to battle against enemies from both series, and both sets of characters make small background cameos in each other's movies. The reason for this crossover was that, at the time, both series had anime and manga being published by Shogakukan and TV Tokyo, as well as both IPs having toys released by Takara Tomy. In addition to the Giga Class battle chips, Base appears as a promotional Duel Masters card called Forte, Brave Fear Lord. Oddly enough, this crossover seems to be more or less ongoing. In 2016, a card featuring Rockman and Kata, one of the main protagonists of Duel Masters, and in 2020, both Rockman and Forte appeared in a special event for the game Duel Masters Plays. In some ways, I guess this makes more sense than the Boktai crossover, but in some ways it makes even less sense. Mr. Match's Absence from Battle Network 5 Mr. Match is a recurring character who shows up in every Battle Network game, except for 5. In the first game, his navvy is Fireman, and he's an operator for World 3, who causes ovens to explode. In Battle Network 2, he's an optional boss, now operating Heatman. He plays no part in the main story. Match once again returns in Battle Network 3, having rejoined World 3, this time with Flame Man, and he attempts to burn down Scilab. During Battle Network 4 Red Sun, he's a contestant in the Den Tournament, once again with Fireman, and he tries to burn down the Den Dome. He appears later in both versions of the game, having a spat with Burner Man. This little firefight causes the net to literally be set ablaze. After a long streak of arsonistic actions, he ends off the series in Battle Network 6, as an elementary school teacher, operating Heatman again. So, where was he during Battle Network 5? According to a developer interview, while Nebula was out causing mayhem, he was out taking courses to become a teacher. How could they even think to let a repeat offender net terrorist, guilty of arson at least twice and a third attempt, anywhere near a school? That's just a terrible idea! especially when the final group of antagonists is a revived World 3. AGAIN! This is just one of the moments in Battle Network 6 that makes absolutely no sense. That said, I really do like Heat Man in this game. I just don't trust the operator as far as I can throw him. But I guess if Ikichi Onizuka can become a teacher, anybody can. Red Sun and Blue Moon were originally one game. 
This idea expresses the possibility that, perhaps earlier on in development, both versions of Battle Network 4 were just one big game. While this point on the iceberg was contributed by Bigfoot Hunter V2, this is my personal headcanon when it comes to which versions are actually canon to the Battle Network series. But unlike the 5th and 6th games, which have to be one or the other from a story standpoint, in that your anti-nebula strike team in Battle Network 5 has to be either or, and Mega Man can only absorb one side beast in Battle Network 6, both versions of Battle Network 4 could theoretically have happened. Both versions of the game have the ability to unlock story scenarios from the opposite version, with the only real gameplay difference being which navvies you form a double soul with. Outside of that, the only real differences are the various miscellaneous aesthetic changes. The only thing that would need to change from there is who starts the cheer to give Mega Man willpower during the end game panic. I think Sal makes a lot more sense than Mr. Match does, so let's go with that. On that note, it also makes a lot more sense for Laser Man to put Mega Man's Dark Soul into Guts Man, because you don't always fight Aquaman every time you play Battle Network 4, so Mega Man may not have met him on this playthrough. But Guts Man works in this scenario because we already had three whole games with Guts Man as a character. If we take the story of Battle Network 4 linearly, then I always imagined it as every tournament is just way, way bigger than they look and land fights all possible opponents before going on to save the world from Duo's asteroid. That's how the story would make the most sense with what we see in the final cutscenes, at least. Otherwise, how are we supposed to know who Chilski and Raika are? What if we didn't fight them on this playthrough? More than that, unlike Rockman EXE 3 and 5, which both had an initial release and then an updated second version later, both versions of EXE 4 were released simultaneously. This is further compounded upon by the fact that the version-exclusive scenarios and bosses can be accessed by linking the games together. And all of the Gigachip icons are present in both versions, unlike the other multi-version games where they don't use the opposite version's Gigachip images. If you're still with us, I'm sorry to say, but that's all for part one. We still have over 100 more entries to cover, and the contributors of this iceberg voted to make this video a multi-parter. I hope that you've been enjoying this deep dive, and I hope that you'll rejoin us next time as we go even deeper down this wonderful rabbit hole. If you haven't already, be sure to rate, subscribe, and enable notifications before you go, so that you can join us again when the expedition resumes in part two. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.